This tutorial is for creating NPCs from Dragon Age Inquisition using a combination of 3ds Max, XPS and Blender. First I will show you how to extract the head, eyes and eyelashes using Dragon Age Inquisition Mod Maker, then import them into 3ds Max and apply them to a base mesh. This method can also be used to create custom inquisitors. However, you need to extract them from the game. First load in the game with Ninja Ripper and then load in a save game with the Inquisitor you want and then following the same steps in this video. If you want to extract NPCs from DLC then use .18 as the early versions cannot do this. However, if you want to extract meshes then use an earlier version as .18 moves all bones to position 0. Dragon Age Inquisition Mod Maker also mirrors models, so now with the release of Frosty Editor it is advised to use that for exporting meshes, as it does not mirror them. Also, it's in the more friendly format of FBX, which can be easily imported into 3ds Max and Blender. For both, I advise to export on FBX 2014 in Frosty Editor. This is the output directory where our models will end up when using Ninja Ripper to get them. Do not rename until after you are finished. Head morphs are found in Data, DA3, Design Content, Head Morphs. I'm extracting Scout Harding for this tutorial. She is found in Skyhold. It may take some time to show the preview. I edited out the weight. Don't worry, it should load at some point. This is not how the character looks in game. However, I can assure you that this is correct. This is what the mesh looks like without bone movement. In game, what you see is this mesh with bones moved as well. This goes for all characters, not just NPCs, your Inquisitor included. My RIP key is Control plus 1, and that is what I changed it to. This is what I will be pressing to rip the mesh from the Dragon Age Inquisition mod maker. You usually can tell when it's ripping. In this, the mesh goes wonky. Once it resumes its original shape, then it is done. Now I'm loading Gnosis. I'm loading it to check the meshes it ripped. As sometimes in Dragon Age Inquisition mod maker, it does not rip everything we need and we need to then rip once or a few more times. In this case, looking at the folders with what I extracted the first time, I can see that the eyelashes are missing. So I rip from the preview once more and check to see if it has now ripped the eyelashes. Now I make a new folder called Scout Harding and move the parts I need into the new folder. I then delete the rest as I don't need them, and so I don't clutter up my PC. Quickly showing you that I've got all the free meshes that I need. Now we need to load in our base mesh into 3ds Max. For this tutorial it is the base dwarf female as I am creating Scout Harding. This is what it looks like once we import the base mesh. Now we need to hide all the bones so we can see the mesh properly while we work. I am doing this by selecting all three mesh parts, then right clicking and selecting hide unselected. Now I am zooming in just to show the base mesh. Now I select the meshes and hide them, but you don't have to do this. Next, we need to run GIMS EVO in order to import the ripped meshes. Find the folder where our meshes are in and select. Then write in the file ID, which is the number of the ripped meshes. Then click import. As you can see, the imported rip meshes are very small compared to the base mesh. This isn't a problem, it's just a nuisance, as it is much easier to do what we want if they are bigger and near the base mesh. Once you have them near the base mesh and bigger, you can start on transferring the shape. Now this isn't possible if the base mesh doesn't match the game mesh. By this, I mean that each mesh has to have the same amount of vertices. So if you rip a mesh from Dragon Age Inquisition Mod Maker, this will be fine as it will usually be the same mesh from Ultra settings. But if you are exporting from the game with settings lower than Ultra, then you will run into problems. In that is instance, you should be using Dragon Age Inquisition Mod Maker to export your meshes as it exports each version of the mesh. 
Here I am using the Morpha modifier to create our new mesh for the shape of the ripped mesh. This way we can use the bones for pulls etc. As our ripped mesh had no skeleton or weight. I can't say enough how important reference images are, not just for the edits of the mesh later, but for later when you create the texture. You can either keep the percentage to 100 or alter it. For this mesh I altered it to 50, however likely in the future I will keep it at 100. After you have altered the percentage to what you want, it is time to add materials. You don't have to do this as you can apply them directly in XPS, however I advise to add them here as it will save some time. Standard material setup for the head and eyes is diffuse, light map, normal and specular. Then for lashes it is just a diffuse texture with transparency. If you are planning on rendering in 3ds Max, then this isn't really the setup for materials that you should follow. However, if you plan on exporting to XPS then re-importing once you've finished your edits, then it should be fine. On the options of the XNLR converter we need to turn off bone limits as most games these days exceed these limits. The reason the head becomes transparent is because the diffuse texture has an alpha layer applied to it. Open GIMP, right click on the layer and click on add layer mask. Then click on transfer layers alpha channel and now when you applied it, you will see it side by side. Right click and delete layer mask. Now you have deleted the alpha channel, export and reload textures in XPS. Going back to what I said earlier, in game what you see is this mesh with bones moved as well. So that is what we are going to do now, move the bones to their correct positions. Now, this is all by sight, which is why I advise to always have reference images, front and side if possible. We use the move option in XPS and select the bones we wish to move. Generally most bones that need moving are eyelids, eyes and mouth area, sometimes others as well. When I am somewhat happy with the positions, I then create the texture and later do any further edits to the mesh. Editing the XCF I have linked to in the description and on DVR is how we get our texture. This also requires a reference image to try and match colours of skin, lips, etc. and what eyelashes, scalp, skin textures they use to look how they look in game. Taking into account lighting in game. If they are outside or in good lighting it is safe to follow those colours. However, if they are inside you may find yourself darkening the skin quite a lot. Or if they are in an area that is too bright you might find yourself lightening the skin too much. So again, please use reference images either by looking online for them or going in game and taking screenshots.
As you can see, I edit the skin colour a few times, trying my best to match my reference image. When a character has a scar, I generally use this colour setup, depending on how severe or new the scar looks. The more new it looks, the darker and harsher it looks. The older it looks, the more pinkish white and less harsh it looks. Now in order to make the scar look like it does in game, we also have to apply it to the normal map. So first, we double check which base texture we used, in this case, dwarf female head base. Find the scar we used and erase the bits we don't need. Now export first without editing the opacity. If it doesn't look right, keep going back and changing it until it does. Exporting from 3ds Max makes the head split up into more than two pieces due to the quality of the mesh. However, when exporting from Blender it splits it into two. But I also import into Blender when exporting from 3ds Max to do any further edits, like to render groups. I could do this in XPS, but while I'm sorting the many pieces out, I also like to do any other edits I need to do. I apologise for the lack of buttons showing, I didn't notice till much later. To delete the default blender scene, which is a cube, camera and light, press A until all are highlighted with an orange line, then press X or delete to delete them. Now import your model. To select multiple meshes in Blender, press Shift and right click. To join those pieces together, press Ctrl and J. To select all and unselect all, press A. Now I check which hair is the right one. During this time, I also decrease the size of the head so it fits into the hair. This is because the default size is bigger than my current Dragon Age Inquisition models. Once I am happy with where the hair sits, I can either join them in XPS by going to modify and export scene as mesh, or import the models into Blender and do it that way. I have another tutorial that shows the XPS route, so in this I will show how I do it in Blender. Once happy with where the head sits under the hair, either export it with modify and export scene as dot mesh, or like I do, save the mesh to keep the size and re-import into Blender. Export scene as dot mesh should also keep the size, however I prefer to use Blender. In Blender, to scale an object, press S, which will scale it on all axes. To scale on the X, Y or Z axis, press S, then X, Y or Z. Same for move, however press G and the desired axis. Also same for rotor, except you press R and the desired axis. Make sure the hair has the same armature as the head, otherwise it won't move in XPS or other programs. Also remember to delete the plus or the minus from the object's name so it shows by default. You can keep the plus if it is a plus. It still will show by default, but you can then also hide it in XPS with Ctrl and A. The final step for editing the head is colouring the hair to its right colour. You will likely go back and forth a few times from exporting to checking in XPS until you find the right colour, as it's not something you always get right the first time. The next step would be finding the body mesh and joining both together. This tutorial, however, does not show that. I hope this tutorial has been helpful. Thank you for watching.